I'm Alex Jackson, and I'm here at the movie premiere, A Boy, A Girl, A Dream. Stay tuned with Fab TV. So, I know, I saw the preview of the movie. So, was it ever a time where you had to pick between love and your career or your dream? Mm. By the grace of God, no. I think that at this point in my life, I would choose love because I love my husband so much. Um, however, he would never make me choose because he knows that what I do as an actor is, is a part of my purpose and, and building a platform so that I can put something into the world and build the kingdom. He knows that's directly connected to who I am, so he would never stand in the way of that. Um, but in the past, I think that there were people who maybe wanted me to choose, but I wouldn't have chose them. <laughs> so, <laughs> Well, you chose the right one now. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. And also, I know you all shot this movie in one shot. So was this one of the more harder films you ever had to do before? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because, you know, you mess up, you start all the way over. It doesn't matter if you're 30 minutes in. You know, if you're 40 minutes in, you literally had to start over. So it definitely was a challenge and um, not easy, you know, especially because there's so many moving parts that you have no control over. It's not just what you bring to the table or your performance or anything like that. It's, I mean, it's that too, but it's like, is this person going to be on their mark by the time you get over there in exactly 20 minutes? Is the next person going to show up on time because they connect to the next thing that happens? Is the Uber going to show up at the exact time? Are we going to be able to get the camera in seamlessly or are we going to start out? I mean, there's so many things. Um, so it definitely was a challenge. took a lot of patience, um, but I think we're super proud of it. So, yeah. So, I know you do a little everything. I do. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so, what are you working on right now? Oh, right now, actually, I'm in the studio working on some special projects. I'm taking a lot of meetings. I'm developing a couple of film television projects. I got, you know, staying busy, you know. Marvel's Luke Cage is out. If y'all haven't seen that, I'm in season two, so check that out. And actually, tonight, uh, uh, so many friends are part of this movie, and I actually have a cameo in it, a fun little... Uh, Impromptu. I don't know if you guys know. I mean, they shot the whole daggone movie yeah, one in shot. one shot. So we had to kind of sit there all day and wait for them to get to us because you know they're they're literally shooting as they go. So we don't. You, we had to be there because who knows when they're going to get to us? And then that whole scene just goes through the room where we are. We're at a Hollywood party on election night, and um, and so a bunch of us sat around and sang songs and played. You know, like just had fun, like mm -hmm. talked and like literally was the singing um, at the table in a Hollywood uh, Hills house. And then when they came in, it was like, boom, you know, we just pretended like we were part of that whole moment, whatever they were doing. And then they <laughs> and then they kept going and kept shooting. It was crazy. I've never been a part of something like that before. I've yeah. never seen a project that was all shot in one shot before. I'm pretty sure it is hard. I, I don't know how they did it, but that's incredible and so impressive. Mm -hmm. So I know, I don't know if you was at New York Fashion Week, but I know you probably was on, um, you know, the blogs or uh, Instagram. I know where you're going with this. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to know, you team Cardi or you team Nikki? Oh, uh, you know what? I really, 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 really love Cardi B. I really do. Um, I think she's humble. She's beautiful. She's talented. Um, she's supportive of other people. And... Um, I'm rooting for her to continue to keep breaking records and making history and being number one everywhere. I love it. I think she's a sweetheart, and, I, and I'm, I'm rooting for her. Okay, so. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Because <laughs> I be seeing you in the comments. Yeah, I love her. You see me in all her comments. That's funny. Yeah, yes, I love her. <laughs> so everybody said, you know, you got the Black Hollywood on lock right now. That's what they said. That's, that's, what, that's what Tammy said on Bonnie Chronicles that time. That's what they talking about? Okay. Yeah, that's what they said. Love Tammy. Love Tammy. I do. That's I love Bonnie people. Chronicles. That's my sister. I know Tammy 20 years. She had another career before she was a superstar. You know, she used to be one of the biggest stylists. I did not know that. 20 years ago. So my first video that I was the leading man in was a video called Escape. Old school, keep sweat, am I dreaming? She was the stylist. She's a huge stylist, yeah. I would have never known it. Look at me telling all of this. Right, tell me something. I mean, she's so talented. I'm so proud of her. But uh, yeah, I'll take it. So, what made you all decide to do this movie like in one take that's never done, been done before? Well, you know, it's been done a couple of times. Uh, Alfred Hitchcock did it with a film called Rope in the 50s. Um, there was an Italian movie called Victoria where they shot it in one take. And in Birdman, they market it as a one take film, but it's, you know, it's, it's some cuts in there, mm -hmm. you know. But I think, you know, the great thing about 
being an independent filmmaker is that I can do what I want to do. I don't have to like check in with the studio. I don't have to get anyone's permission. And for me, I, I, I like to, I consider myself to be a film connoisseur and somebody that knows film and the history of film. And you know, I want to, I want to make, I want to challenge myself and I want to tell different stories. You know, I was just telling uh, one of the, the uh, reporters down there, like I made a film last year called Gook that was black and white and it won Sundance. It won the Audience Award, uh, you know, Ava, a lot of people got behind the film. And, uh, you know, this year when Cossum called me and told me he wanted to make this film in one take, I was like, I knew it would be really, really challenging. But, I, you know, I, I wanted to accept that challenge and go make it. Was this more difficult than any other other films or shows you've done before? Uh, I don't know if I would say the most difficult. I think definitely difficult in some ways because we had to shoot the film so many times, the entire film. And it was a couple of times where we got halfway through and we had to start all over again and stop because we'd be shooting on the street and somebody would yell, Hey, yo, making good. Uh, yo, hey, yo, 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 Omari. And so we ended up having to have a police escort, and then we ended up having, I mean, it was challenging. It was challenging, but, you know, I, I, I'm really, really happy with the art that we made. I'm happy with the film. I think as an artist, you just want to make the best film that you can make at the end of the day, and I feel like we did that. And all of my friends showed up. This is the sixth film I've made with Megan. Um, you know, she's my producing partner. I love her. I mean, she got behind me when I wrote my very first movie, Video Girl. So, I, you know, I I've seen that. it. I produced it. She, we did Dysfunctional Friends together. We did Love. We did A Girl Like Grace. We just wrapped the film three weeks ago, which is her directorial debut. And she's going to have an amazing career as a director. She's super talented behind the camera. And so, you know, when you can work with people that are your real family, this is my second film I produced with Omari. You know, me and Jay have known each other a long time and always talked about working together. And just all the people I called to do cameos, from Kenya Barris to Mike Jackson to, you know, these are people that got Golden Globes and people that got Oscars, you know. And so, um, you know, I was just grateful that everybody took the call and showed up for me. Was it ever a time where you had to pick between love and your dream? Yeah, that's the story of my life. I mean, I used to, I had a whole nother career before this. A lot of people don't realize, I mean, it was a long time ago, but I used to be a fashion model. I had a real career. I lived in New York during 9-11. I know this is the anniversary. I seen the plane crash into the building. I lived in New York at the time. I was there. And, uh, you know, when I, I had a really great life when I was, you know, a fashion model. Like, I worked every day. Like, People knew who I was, like, you know, um, but I couldn't see myself being a screensaver or being only remembered for taking photos. And so I went to my then girlfriend, who was, you know, the only woman still to this day that I've ever, like, truly loved, and told her that I wanted to be a writer and I was moving to L.A. And she didn't want to get on board, you know. She thought I was going through, like, a... A, a, a midlife crisis, even though I was only 23. She thought I was going through a midlife crisis because, you know, 9 11 had just happened. And, you know, then they remember in Jersey, like, they found like people was dying of anthrax. It was like a lot of stuff going on around during that time. But I had, so I had to make the, you know, the trip to LA alone. And I had to leave. And I was paying for two places. I still had to pay for the place she was living in. And I had my little studio apartment in the valley. And I was just out here just like going after my dream. I wake up every day, I'll be crying some days. I'll be like, what am I doing? All I had was an air mattress and my, my kitchen table and I would just write all day. And that's, you know, that's, and I must have rewrote Video Girl, you know, I don't know, maybe 80 times or something like that. And I got the script to Megan, she believed in me. And, uh, you know, he's here. I mean, you know, you got one life. You gotta challenge yourself, you gotta like, when you are uncomfortable and things aren't comfortable for you, that's when you at your best. That's what I really believe. If you can get, if you can make it out and get to the other side of it, you're gonna be proud of yourself that you took that leap and that risk. I took the risk. I didn't go to film school. You know, I didn't. I don't. I wasn't. You know, kissed into the business. I didn't have family that was in the business. Um, you know, in fact, my parents, you know, my mother's uh, on the school board. My dad works for the government, so they they never really was like. You know, they was like, what you doing? What, yeah. You know, so I, I just, all I had was my dream and like what I felt that I should be doing. And God told me to go, so I went. And uh, 
30 films later and 10 TV shows and you know uh, things are really really great now so. and now you controlling Black Hollywood no, nah, I don't want to say that. It's a lot of people controlling Black Hollywood. Well, you got a big of the pot of the Black Hollywood. You know what? I'm just trying to do good work at the end of the day. I'm just trying to good work, do good work and, and, and uh, keep God first. And whatever he tells me to do, that's what I'm going to do. So. So, how do you keep up with all those dance moves after 40 years? Oh my God! You <laughs> I know what? I literally watched right the Bobby the Brown story today, <laughs> right. part two, and I was like, "How do they? How do they still doing this?" You know what? It's um, there's a love, a deep love, and a passion for it. And since the very beginning, even though we've accomplished way more than what we set out to do, there's still so much more we want to accomplish. We still feel like the world hasn't seen the best of New Edition in all six of us. In whatever form it is, whether it's BBD or Ronnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike, which we're on tour with right now. Um, and we've been doing it for 40 years, so it's kind of locked in. It's second nature now. Well, I know when I watched the New Edition story and watched the Bobby Brown story, and a lot of you all went through so much like as a group and individual. So how, like, you coming back together again, how can you not... Well, how can you stop from making the same mistakes you all were making back then? Well, when it comes to our finances, we um, we dot we make sure every I is dotted, every <laughs> T is crossed, and we ask questions, and nothing gets by okay. without us seeing anything, especially when it comes to money. Even before we set out on the road, we know exactly what's going on. Okay. Um, and then as far as the mistakes that we've made, it's just experience. I mean, and just learning to be grateful for what you have, for your family, your wife, and the people <laughs> in your life that loves you and, and to still have a career when so many have come and gone, I think it's just that gratitude and the love and the respect that we have for each other and for what we do keeps us going, you know, and it's like, trust me, what you saw in the movie was just a small percent of the lessons that we've learned along this 40-year path. It's a true brotherhood. Yeah. Do you all still have to deal with egos? Absolutely. Really? I mean, you know what, though? No, nah, I, I, I won't even say it's ego. It's more, you know, we're 50 years old now, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. everyone has families. Everyone has yeah. other businesses, other entities. So are pulling you in so many different directions. So it's hard to get everyone on the same page when it comes to where they are in their life and as far as where they are with their family and what they're able to do as far as their schedule. So I think it's that's more of a challenge than anything as opposed to just dealing with egos. You know? And last question, what made you all decide to do a song together as a couple? Um, the new edition movie came out. Our yeah. story was out there and... You know, he came to hear some of my solo music, and before I put it out, he said, I want to introduce you to the music industry because I think you found your style. So yeah. we then set out to write a song, but we wanted to write it about what we've actually been through. So a true song of why we're still together after 14 right. years. Um, and I wanted to bring out a different side of Ricky. We know him as Belle Biv DeVoe, New Edition, that sound, but Ricky loves Sting, he loves James Taylor, so we wanted to bring a different essence out. I felt like together we could do that, so we have more music we're working on now, too. Absolutely. And that's a wrap at A Boy, A Girl, A Dream. Stay tuned to next time on Fab TV.